Welcome back. The other day we touched on uh, this indicator, the 10-year treasury minus the Fed funds. It's an extremely easy indicator to use, and I think you're going to find it very interesting and quite insightful. Uh, what we see here, the white line is the 10-year minus Fed funds indicator. That's the white line. The red line is the S&P 500. Now, very simply what it is, it's the 10-year U.S. Treasury percentage, the yields, minus the federal funds rate. So the 10-year Treasury right now is at around a 4.2%, and the Fed funds is at a 5.5. Well, that gives us a negative number. 4.2 minus 5.5, it gives us a little bit over negative one, negative 1 1.3 in that area. And what this does is it reflects the level of inflation, the subsequent Federal Reserve activity, and how that in turn affects the bond markets, which again moves, uh, you know, moves uh, the yields. Now, starting on the left-hand side, this goes back to 2002. Now, we know 2002, we had very low interest rates. The stock market started to, after recovering from the 2001 crash, started to move to the upside from 2001 through 2007. Well, from 2002 through four, we basically had zero interest rates. During that period of time with zero interest rates, the 10-year bond moved up in yield slightly. The yields on the bonds compete with stocks. So when the stock market goes up, the bond market has to offer a higher yield in order to compete with stronger stocks. Conversely, when the stock market goes down, bond yields also go down. Okay, so we see this white line, the 10-year bond minus Fed funds went up from a 2 to a 4. What do these numbers represent? Very simply, the 10-year Treasury yield minus federal funds. So the 10-year treasury yield was uh, approximately, let's say, 3%, and uh, the Fed funds rate was around 1%. Well, 3 minus 1 equals 2, and that's where we were. Now, the 10-year bond during that period of time went from a 3 up to around a 5%, actually a little bit higher than that, around 5%. And interest rates did not move, so 5 minus 1 equals 4, and that's almost where we were at that point. Well, all of a sudden, 2004, we see this line plummet, goes very, very sharply to the downside. What happened? Was it the bond market that moved? Not really. It was the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. You see, when the 10-year minus Fed funds, when we see low interest rates, the line goes up. But when interest rates go up, it's the second half of the equation, the line goes down. Well, notice that the line went down and consolidated in this negative area, just below zero. That shows us that at that period of time, the interest rates were a little bit above the bond market. And coincidentally, right around that time, the stock market hit its all-time highs, 2007. Well, we know what happened to the stock market after 2007. It experienced a store crash. Now, when the market started to crash, the uh, Federal Reserve says, uh-oh, uh, economy's in trouble. Let's cut interest rates. Well, when we cut interest rates, this line goes up. You see, we went from 5, I believe, 5.75% interest rates down to 1, basically almost 0, very quickly. And when the Fed cuts rates, this line goes up. Now, also, of course, the bond market was moving in that time, but the primary driver in that was the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates. Well, the line went up as the stock market hit its all-time lows, and then we know the Federal Reserve kept rates very low for a long time, near zero. And during that period of time, the bond market went up and then started to waver. And this wavering, this actually weakening in the 10-year bond is a reason why this line moved down. But we had zero interest rates this whole time, which fueled the stock market higher. Up until we hit a very big low, when again, we were below zero. Make a special note when this line goes below zero. This below zero shows us, again, that the 10-year bond yield is below federal funds rates. Well, that was around 2018, 2019, and we had a lot of inflation. If you remember, the stock market was very strong. Federal Reserve actually started to cut rates at that point. When the, when the Federal Reserve cuts rates, well, then we see uh, this line uh, go up. Federal Reserve cuts rates and this line starts to go up. Then we had that COVID crash and the Federal Reserve cut rates all the way down to zero. And that's why this line moved up. 
Well, then fast forward to just about last year, we had very, very low interest rates and a very strong stock market recovering from the COVID crash. And then all of a sudden we had this historic inflation, which we could not stop. So the Federal Reserve started raising rates. And as they rose rates, as they increased rates at an historic level, we saw this line plummet. This indicator line goes down when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates. It's the second half of the equation, the Fed funds. Now, let's take a look at it from a different point of view. It's the same indicator. The red line this time is the federal funds rate. These are actually interest rates, and we can see exactly how this works. Interest rates are really a primary driver, but the 10-year bond is very that has a very strong influence on this as well. But notice again, 2004, we had very low interest rates. That's the y-axis on the right-hand side, that number one, 1% interest rates. Then the Fed starts to raise interest rates. And as they rose interest rates, this white line crashed at the exact same time. Interest rates went up to over 5%, and this line was below zero. And we had low interest rates for a long period of time. And during that period of time, the stock market grew, as we know, but the 10-year bond yield start to waver. You see, this line didn't move, and this line moved down. So what's the other half of the equation? It's a 10-year bond. The 10-year bond starts to decline. But let's go back a second. Let's take a look at the signal that we would have received from this. The line goes down to uh, about a negative one. Negative numbers in this indicator indicate that the Federal Reserve interest rates are above the 10-year Treasury yield. Well, this line going down indicates that the Federal Reserve raised interest rates. Now, intuitively, no. Hey, when the Fed raises rates, that's done to slow down the economy. But sometimes they go too far and it causes the economy to crash. It causes stock market crashes. It causes, causes recessions, things of that nature. Well, when the Federal Reserve notices that there's trouble out there, they'll actually start to cut rates. If you look at this rate cut, we can go back, you know, look at our historical data. The Fed actually started to cut rates before the stock market even crumbled. Well, when they cut rates, this white line starts to go up. So if we're looking for a signal for the stock market to crumble, this is what it looked like last time. When the line is very low, below zero, and then the Fed starts to cut rates and this line goes up. The stock market didn't crash until around October of 08, but the Fed started ra uh, cutting rates well before that. Then we see here the line comes back down below zero again, and the Fed starts to cut rates. Around 2019, mid, if I memory serves correct, around mid 2019. Well, notice as the white line started to go up before the stock market crumbled. Now, I know 2020, it was a result of the COVID crisis, but the stock market was actually kind of on a little bit of weak footing before that. Here's the same indicator, 10-year minus Fed funds alongside the 10-year U.S. Treasury. That's the other side of the equation. Now, when uh, the Treasury market goes up, this line goes up as well, which is what we saw in 2004. Then this line goes down, and that's the result of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. But most importantly, notice what happened. We know from 2009 through 2017, 2018, interest rates did not change. They were at zero this entire time. This line moved down only as a result of the 10-year Treasury yield moving. Notice the very strong correlation. This pattern, the up and the down, follows the same pattern. We hit these lows, which coincide with these lows. Then we went up, and then we went down. This entire correlation, see this downtrend from 2013 to 16, mimics exactly the downtrend 2013 to 2016. When interest rates stay at zero and don't change, it doesn't have to be at zero in this case it was, but when interest rates don't change for a long period of time, this indicator just mimics the 10-year bond yields. All of a sudden, when the Fed starts to raise interest rates, well, that's when this line you know, really starts to crumble. Interest rates go up, this line goes down. That happened in 2019. The Fed starts to cut rates, this line goes up. Of course, it also follows you know the bond market to an extent when the when the and that's the reason being is that the, when the federal reserve moves it usually moves a lot faster than the bond market normally moves 
But when the when the Federal Reserve doesn't move, then this indicator has no choice but to only watch bonds. Now, if you're curious, we could take a look at a historical point of view going all the way back to 1962. Now, we don't have the stock market charts to overlay this. Uh, you know, you can research that, of course. It's, you know, that information is out there. But even without there, take a look at the cycles. Take a look at some of the patterns that we see over here. First of all, we can see that this indicator is above zero a lot more than it's below zero. It hit a negative four back in the early 1970s. And then later 1970, mid 1970s, we saw a lot of inflation, a lot of inflation. And then we had higher interest rates. Then in the 1980s, lots of inflation as well. Higher interest rates, Federal Reserve raises interest rates that sends it to very significant lows. This line over here almost completely coincides with the 1987 uh, stock market crash. That's that October very famous crash. Uh, but since then, we've seen this line only at the very deepest levels touch a negative two. The negative two indicates, again, that the interest rates are 2% above, two percentage points above the 10-year bond. And we saw uh, it hit this level in the 1990s, 2001, 2007. We were on a negative one. And then currently, we're again almost touching a negative two. Now, uh, this does follow a very significant pattern. Also on the top side, we have a 4% ceiling, so to speak. And this tells us, hey, when the 10-year bond yield is 400 basis points or four percentage points above Fed funds, that's probably as usually as high as a 10-year bond is going to go when the Fed Reserve doesn't raise interest rates. Now, the 10-year bond, remember, that follow, the yield follows the stock market. And that's actually something that's you know, quite insightful, I think. When, the in, when stocks are strong and when we have inflation caused by low interest rates, the yield goes up. But the Federal Reserve doesn't seem to want to tolerate more than a 4% spread. When we get up to around 4% spread, I mean, the 10-year bond yield is uh, 4 percentage points more than Fed funds interest rates are concerned, that's when they start raising interest rates. Well, most recently, where were we? Well, uh, we had uh, the 10-year bond was on 4%, and we had almost zero interest rates. So that pattern pretty much holds true. And the last time we saw that, well, actually a little bit less than that, was around the three most recently. This is an zoomed-in view of where we are right now, uh, the 10-year minus, 10-year uh, uh, treasury minus Fed funds. We currently sit right around here, negative one. That's after hitting significant lows around 1.75. Stock market, we know, has been quite strong, at least until lately. Uh, and again, remember from the prior chart, when we're anticipating, let's say, a downturn in the stock market, the first thing is the Federal Reserve raises interest rates to slow the economy down, to fight inflation. Well, that's where we are now. The second step, is that, the, is that the Fed will actually start cutting rates because maybe they smell that there's trouble out there and that they should cut rates to stimulate the economy. So what's the takeaway from this? What's the stock market going to do? What, what will be in the future? Well, of course, we don't know. But if history is any guide, if history is any judge, the Federal Reserve will continue raising rates or at least not cut rates as long as they believe that the economy can sustain it. But if we see the Fed pivots, if we see the Fed start to cut rates, and some economists are talking about that cutting coming soon, but it hasn't happened yet. But if we see that happen, then we should make note that historically, that's not really been a good moment for the stock market. Uh, and again, history is any guide. It's you know certainly every new trading day is a unique day. But that's what the data in the past has, has shown us. And it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.